Hello, I'm Pete Zielinski, Editor-in-Chief of Modern Machine Shop Magazine. Welcome to today's webinar titled, The Future is Modular, Don't Be Left Behind, brought to you by Philips Precision. Your inspection lab might not be keeping pace, and it can. In many shops, the shop floor benefits from advanced machines, software, and modular fixturing, but the inspection lab is only now seeing advanced machines and software while the modular fixturing is still missing. Today's webinar is about that missing piece. By embracing modularity, inspection labs can now inspect more parts faster and keep up with the shop floor. Our, pre our presenters today, and you can see them there. Our presenters are Alan Delisle, Technical Sales Coordinator with Philips Precision, and Eric Meehan, who's President of Manufacturers Representative for Inspection Arsenal, W.K. Coleman. While they're speaking, feel free to ask questions. You can use that question pane you see at the right of your screen, and we'll, we'll take those questions after the talk. With that, Alan, if you're ready, please begin. Thank you very much. Uh, how are you doing, everybody? My name is Alan Delisle. Um, as uh, previously stated, I'm the Technical Sales Coordinator at Phyllis Precision in Boylston, Massachusetts. This here is Eric Meehan. Uh, he's one of our representatives. Right. And uh, like all our reps, we work together to uh, find solutions, help break bottlenecks in manufacturing companies, um, help streamline uh, processes, and help uh, make their production process faster than it's ever been before. Um, one thing we're going to be talking about today is uh, in, uh, modular inspection and a few of our product lines at Philips uh, Inspection Arsenal and Laser Arsenal. Uh, Laser Arsenal is actually one of the, it's actually the only uh, standard fixturing component system for laser marking on the uh, market today. And uh, it's more popular sister inspection arsenal is quickly taking over the manufacturing um, industry as a whole. And uh, we've, we've uh, fixtured up a lot of companies, some big names, Hyundai Automotive, Milwaukee Tool, um, Kawasaki Motors just put an order in not long ago to picture up them. Uh, a lot of other companies I can't mention because of uh, non-disclosure agreements, but we'll say uh, one of them rivals NASA. We'll just leave it at that, and uh, but with good reason though, because modular inspection really allows companies to be able to streamline their inspection process unlike ever before. Um, basically, we've seen uh, companies with invest very small amounts of money and, and, and uncover large amounts or, or uncover tons of hidden profit. And I know that sounds vague, but there is one company and I can say this for, I can say this, let me ask you, would you spend $1,000 to save $100,000? And I think that it's pretty clear that most of us would, but there's actually a company out there that saved even more money than that. Uh, we'll get back to them in, in just a little while. Um, but I want to start off by, by saying, why do we need to talk about inspection? What do we, what's the importance of, of breaking the bottleneck in an inspection system? And that's because we need to keep up with the demand for quality. In previous years, we've seen the demand um, was all about faster, cheaper, more, more, more. How fast could the manufacturing company crank out parts as cheap as possible and, and as quickly as possible? Well, we became in turn a throwaway nation of Walmarts, if you will, and um, here we are 15, 20 years later, and we've kind of realized what we've done to ourselves. And current generations, uh, the demand is if for quality is beginning to come back. And I, I believe firmly, and I think that the industry sees that as uh, future generations take shape, we're going to see that demand for quality begin to peak even more. Um, everywhere we go, we're seeing CMM machines in all of the shops everywhere. Um, you know, in, in previous years, CNC machines were the big rage, bigger, better machines, bigger, better software, streamlined fixturing systems. And uh, now that we're beginning to see that we need to have uh, better quality added to that demand, um, the CMM labs and CMM uh, or, or inspection processes as a whole have definitely begun to take shape. And um, so everywhere we go, we see small job shops, we're seeing uh, even, even garage machine shops that have at least a portable gauge arm or a handheld portable gauge arm. And uh, the, the biggest gap we're still seeing is between the machines and the parts. So the machines are great. The machines are, 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 are running faster and, and more streamlined than ever before. Uh, we got gd and systems that we're running and, and software programming that are, that are streamlining things faster than ever before. But if you think about what really is going to make that machine the best for you is to be able to run that machine. And how long is it taking your inspector to stage parts? Or how long is it taking you to, to set up fixturing for a new part or to swap between part types? And with all that downtime, that's all money that you're losing. Um, we, you know, we, 
can go back to uh, what I was just talking about, about a thousand dollar investment. There is a company called Triangle Manufacturing who invested a thousand dollars into modular uh, inspection fixturing of uh, laser arsenal. I'm sorry, of uh, inspection arsenal, and uh, they were able to uh, cut their inspection time in half and save over one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars in their first run of production. And that's just in the produ uh, production run. That doesn't include keeping spindles running. Uh, keeping the shop floor moving or any any further throughput or any future jobs, that's on that one job, 125 grand on one run. Uh, so it's definitely clear that if you're not improving, you're definitely losing money, you're definitely wasting money. And uh, with a leaner inspection system and standard components, you now can build a fixture just one time and keep it for as long as you need, move it out of the way when you don't need it, click it back into place when it is time for that part to come up again. Um, another big company that, that uh, had really great results with modular inspection was uh, Kennebec Technologies, who actually, uh, they put CMM machines right on the shop floor, uh, right in the work cells, and they swap between about 70 part types per day. Now, I don't know about you, but if you try to swap between 70 part types per day using putty, or even using a one-piece grid plate, having to tear down those fixtures and put it back up every single time, you can see how that could definitely be almost impossible task to do that all in one day. Um, so as we see the demand shift, we, we see uh, you know a huge improvement uh, or, or uh, what's the word I'm looking for? We see a, a strive for improvement in the inspection lab, but we're still seeing that gap between fixturing and keeping those machines running and, and getting those machines um, to uh, return on that investment to help to crank up that production. Um, so if you think about the future a little bit about how where modular inspection could go. Um, think about how much money could be saved that could be then spent in uh, on future technologies as we come in. We're already seeing um, huge improvements with additive manufacturing, um, and then now for inspection specifically, we are already working on jobs with uh, robotic inspection, where we haven't seen robotic arms that are staging plates that are actually um, dropping parts into fixtures, running the machines, uh, and, and the next day we're coming in and finding uh, a uh, Finding inspection reports, and it's all be, being streamlined, and it brings us one step closer to having a lights out inspection process. So I know what you're currently thinking: what is modular inspection? I, I don't quite get it. I see here the the theories you're talking about. Well, that's what we're here for. We're going to give you a little rundown of what modular inspection is all about and what it can do for your company. Um, first of all, it starts with the rail. So instead of having a one piece grid plate, and I've had had people call me and say, I want a 48 by 86 inch grid plate. You need a four, a four foot by three foot grid plate, and that goes on the machine and it's stuck there forever. Instead, you go with yourself with a docking rail. Now, these come in 12, 18, and 30 inch lengths. And this here, the, it's a countersunk slotted um, bolt, uh, bolt, slotted bolt holes, excuse me, and that will be able to accommodate any bolt pattern on any machine. But usually, what inspectors will do is they'll use a really high, uh, heavy duty double sided milling adhesive. And they'll actually mount this right to the very edge of the granite. And that allows them, not unlike ever before, to be able to open up the entire work surface of the granite. And they can measure right on the granite surface. Uh, once you have that mounted in place, um, the next thing that you would be worried about or thinking about would be this qual sphere and plate. So this here, this is for mounting the qual, uh, the qual sphere, which we have set up over here on another one. And this is probably the most valuable part of the whole system. The fact that you can click, you can put this qualifying plate right in place, qualify the machine, and you can move it right out of the way, and it completely eliminates the accidental crashes that we see. And uh, with this plate, it can save you potentially 25 grand. If you get crashed at uh, for a new head, as well as a uh, recalibration of the machine, can definitely can definitely get up there in price. So this here, this is this would pay for the whole probably for the whole kit and then some if you didn't have it, if you just had one, one uh, pro crash. Uh, beyond that, we have, once everything's mounted up, we then have various size plates. So instead of one peak, one grid plate that takes up the whole granite, you know, this is a six by six, they go all the way up to, we have 18 by 24 plates, maybe even bigger than that, and we can even do custom sizes if you have any custom sizes. So depending on the size parts you're using, you could just set up a fixture right up on this, Set your part, click it into place, run the machine, and then when you need it, grab it off the granite, stick it on the shelf until you need it again, and then click it right back into place again. And uh, it's repeatable faster than, than any type of inspection fixturing system before. 
so beyond that, there are clamping options and all types of other devices that we make as standard components as well as specialty components. And um, I'm going to actually let Eric take over, and he's going to give you a little rundown of some of the uh, some of the components that we have available. All right, Eric. Yep. Hi, so I just wanted to uh, show you several different ways on how to picture any one thing of part. Um, there's no right or wrong way to picture a part. Um, just to find out which way would best fit your application. Um, Let's move this camera down so we can see it right here. here. So we have a rail set up for you. Yeah, we have a rail set up here. Here's a plate. But here is uh, the first product I want to talk about here is our ER16 collar truck. You can mount this right to your plate. And if you have round parts, you can click it right into your rail. Um, but for now, this uh, ER16 collar truck is actually going to be our part for all of our other picture needs. Here, I have is a spider, a spider clamp where there's, there's three three legs of the spider. They're adjustable. Um, here you take your your part. Lock it in, locate it, and then you can click it into your round. There's one. Here is another picture plate. Where on this one here, I have a magnetic bead lock and a picture stand off. I see a riser grip. Uh, the riser grip. Here, I'll put it in the magnetic bead lock. We'll lock it into place. Here, lock it in the riser. And same thing. Now this riser grip is this, place. this riser grip is pretty cool because once you get it set um, in the back here, there's actually two screws here in the back, and you can adjust those to adjust the height of this this top part. Once you get it the height that you need, there's just a little set screw up here at the top that has a non-marring tip on it, and then right in here you can see where it's got a V groove in there. And even if we knock it over just a little bit, you can really see that in there. There's a V groove in there on both sides, so you can put pins in there, all kinds of circular parts in there. You can measure them out this way, you can measure them out this way. And then on this side of it, there's a little screw in there, and you can pull that screw out and you can put a stop in there. So if you run a pin in, you can have that pin run and you can have a stop and it's just repeatable every single time. So that's our riser group. So there was three there. Here I have another couple setups on this one 6x12 fixture plate. I have a simple stop with a crossbow, and I have another simple stop here with a trigger finger. And I'll show you how they work. Same part. Pop it right into the simple stop, pull the trigger back. We're located then, and into your rail. Second setup, pop it into your simple stop, take the trigger finger over. Down. Here you have eight pounds of holding force. The trigger finger is made of plastic. It's not going to mark your part. Yeah, the nice thing too is that if you notice some of the other some of the other uh, fixtures out there, once you are using wedging force to hold it, it's marring the crap out of the parts. But these ones here are plastic. Once it's done, you pull it up out of the way, and it stays out of the way. It doesn't drop right to the plate every single time. You have to reset. So if you're holding a part in place and having to do all these adjustments, this thing's already up out of the way, holding itself in place for you, makes things nice and easy. And actually, before I take this one, I'm sure. Let's, uh, so here's the, the trigger finger. So here's another option. If you need more than eight pounds of holding force, you have a strong arm here. And this one's made of aluminum. That's our leather one here. Yeah. Uh, set up the this part, but you'll get the idea. Lock it down. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. And that will hold up to about yeah, 30 yeah. pounds of, of clamping force with that. 30 pounds of holding force. Yeah, and, you, and you can adjust the angle of this too, so you can bring it down so it's nice and flat to the to the plate right like this. You get a real low profile grab on it, or if you want, you can come up and you can hold it at more of an angle if you want to tighten it like that. 
at a steeper angle this way and grab it right on the very, very edge. But it definitely gives you a lot more options, a lot more flexibility. Um, definitely holds a little bit more sturdier than the trigger fingers do, but um, if the trigger finger will do the job, I recommend uh, going that way. Because the whole idea is you want to uh, fix your parts for, with as little amount of clamping force as possible so you don't run into any distortion of parts or uh, anything like that. So that's really one of the big things that we keep in mind when we uh, design our fixtures. Here's another plate with a couple more fixtures to hold the same part. This one here is our spanner wrench, our spanner vise. Um, here is a simple stop with a spring lock clamp. And I'll show you how both of them work. Uh, the spanner vise comes with aluminum soft draws, so you can machine a profile of whatever size part you have. Um, put your part in, it's adjustable. Yep. Lock in. Lock yep. in here. Rip. Yeah, and the nice thing on the spanner vise is you can actually keep the static end in place and then the adjustable end, you can run it way back here or, or as close or as far away as you need it to be. Um, and, and really kind of be able to hold infinite part sizes. And you can even get data from underneath it too. So if you're running a CMM or a CMM probe, you can actually come up on, on the underside and measure parts as well. And here it is in our, um, I'll show you a picture of the, the spring stop again. Deactivated by pulling the spring. Pop it into your simple stop. Pull the trigger back. There you go. It's located then. Go ahead and lock it into your rail and run the machine. Lock in and load it. We want to go to uh, oh, yeah. show the uh, show the radio plate. Yeah, I guess so the radio plate. I don't know if we're going to have a picture of that, but I guess that's right. Hold on to that too. So this is the radio plate. This is a, a, a round plate that we designed because we really kind of came to the realization that we're measuring round parts on square plates didn't make a lot of sense. Not all parts uh, are square. Right. Some we parts uh, are round. <laughs> we learned that back in preschool that square square parts don't fit around holes. Uh, but we designed this and fixed in place just the same exact way. It's been laser marked 360 degrees every 15 degrees around. Uh, this will actually just help you center uh, circular parts and types of round parts. It's the, the only one of its kind on the market right now. Um, it's very, very popular. Uh, so this is something I wanted to show you guys about how, just how deep we've gotten into uh, fixing the, the bottlenecks that are, that are plaguing inspection processes all across the industry. Uh, let's say one of your parts is just too big for a picture plate and you want to put your part directly on the granite. Okay, you just uh, an angle plate. And you want to pop it in your rail and you can put your part directly on the granite and locate it then. You can take a measurement line or a high measurement, anything directly right off the surface. Let me show you the other way. You can talk about that one. So another, another thing we can talk about is, this is our rapid lock vise. This is actually a pneumatic vise. And you may think to yourself, well, why do I want to use a pneumatic vise in inspection? Well, number one is for repeatability and accurate repeatability. Because as I said before, we want to make sure that we're measuring parts with the, think our clamping parts with the minimal amount of force necessary to hold that part in place. Because if we go too tight, when we squeeze too much, we're going to distort that part, and we're not going to get an accurate gauge on and on. So with this, you click the switch, it pops open, you put that part in there, and no matter how much air pressure you run through there, it's going to be consistent. So you flip the switch to close the jaws, and it's going to consistently uh, clamp that part the same way, no matter who's doing it. Even the same, the same uh, inspector, the same programmer could have a different touch each time. I'm sure, he could use that spanner vise, but if he drops something in and twists that thumb screw, and then the next time he drops it in and he twists that thumb screw just a little bit more, it's gonna it's gonna be a different a, a, a different pressure and it's gonna run the risk of, of distorting that part. So and this here, part. exactly, and now you'd be, be be failing parts that are actually good because it was actually distorted by the fixture. So this here, it just does away with any of that user error or that any of that human interaction. And uh, so whether it be one guy measuring multiple parts or Multiple inspectors measuring parts. You don't have to worry about anybody uh, clamping anything too tightly or too loosely because it's going to get consistent uh, clamping power every single time. That's the, the biggest, the biggest uh, selling point on this. Talk about the uh, 
We think we already went right far enough early. I just wanted to talk, maybe we could just touch base on this sure. real quick. I just wanted a couple of questions I find out in the field is how do we mount the, uh, the ball to the plate? Uh, I just want to show you. Here it is, it's just a recessed bowl where you can put your nut um, or bolt into the uh, into the plate where it won't interfere with the ground. Yep. Yeah, so the Zeiss ones, the stud will actually go through the hole and then you can run your nut right in there. Um, but a couple of others you'll find, um, you know, hexagon machines and, and maybe Nikon machines and stuff like that, where it'll actually be a threaded, a threaded uh, hole that, or a threaded sh uh, shaft that will go through there, and we'll supply you with uh, different inserts for different thread patterns. Um, just let us know what you need, and we'll make sure we get you the correct one. Uh, on a spider plant, if uh, the three-legged didn't doesn't fit your part or your part's too big, we can always. Yeah, I'm going to show it. We got a one, one legged option on the spider clamp as well. So, this here you could use this one in, in certain ways. I've been in uh, plants where uh, they've taken four of these and put them in four different locations and they were able to adjust these to fit things. I've gone into, I've gone into inspection departments where inspectors have told me that they've been working on a part that's this big, it's got no flat surfaces on it, all kinds of deep pockets and grooves and angles. They got to do like 37 different measurements on this thing. And they've been sitting on it for, for three weeks trying to figure out how to hold it. And we've gone in with these and had them set up with a way to be able to fixture that part to get all 37 measurements. And we've got it done probably in about an hour or so, of being, of putting our heads together and figuring all that all that out. And then that's an hour done. The fixture's made. You break it off the granite, and now you never never have that hour again. Now you're talking seconds to get that fixture back on the granite. Yeah, one thing I'd like to point out is with the inspection arsenal, with our standard workload of components, will cover about 90% of your um, of your work holding applications uh, with standard components. So you could have a custom fixture with standard components. The way you take your standard components, you will, you'll make a custom fixture. And then for that 10% of the parts that standard components do not fit, we can always custom make a fixture yeah. for your lightning. Yeah, we do custom picturing all day. And that's actually where we started because we're a manufacturing shop just like everybody else. We're actually, we call ourselves a manufacturing laboratory. We're basically a big think tank uh, figuring out how to be able to streamline our own processes, which then spill over to our customers and everybody else. Um, you know, we, we are, the pains that we, that we feel are the same pains that manufacturers feel all over the world. We know exactly the, you know, the realities of what they're up to. realize that there's this huge gap for picturing. So we put our heads together and, and Steve Phillips, who we've also invented uh, the, the pitbull clamp, now one my mighty bite, um, he, uh, he said this is, you know, enough is enough. We got to figure out a better system. And he came up with this, this genius system. And uh, as we continue to do custom picturing, because again, you're always going to have fuzzy parts. There's always going to be something out there that we've never seen before. And uh, as we continue to go back to designs that we've had for, for various customers, and we're using them again and again. We decide, hey, we should make this into a standard product, and then that's how the the, the system grows. So, you know, another new product that we can show you is this here. This is a and uh, this is called the skinny vice. A very skinny, non-intrusive vice. Uh, this would be great for vision systems or CMMs. Once it's on a vision system plate, you can get light shine right up underneath it. And it stays well out of the way. You don't get any interference in, uh, with, with your inspection. And it allows you to be able to hold parts in a very, very minimal, minimal area to really give you almost 100% uh, access to the part. So if you were to mount that to your, to your plate, you could get the, a part in there, even something just as small as this. Let's see. There you go. It's mounted up. It's a, such a minuscule area where that part is held. So no matter what you need to, to inspect, it gives your CMM the ability to get right around that whole part and inspect the entire part in one shot. Uh, this is going to be available with both a thumb screw as well as with a, a spring-loaded clamp with multiple, uh, multiple spring sizes uh, to be able to, to streamline your production. Again, everything we do, we try to help uh, you make production faster than it's ever been. We realize it's a big competitive market out there. and if you're not improving, somebody else is, and we all know what happens when that when that goes down. <laughs> um, a lot of times, people already have an existing system, uh, an existing uh, 
square plate grid pattern plate. Um, for that application, we have just the tail part. You can bolt this onto your existing plate, use one of our docking rails, and click it right on. Yep. It's your adapter plate. Um, so we've gone through all those fixtures. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Another thing, uh, just to, to touch off this one here again. If you already have a, a system, you can always attach this to the side. So let's say you had a Tico plate, you could bolt to the side, click it in, or you could actually, if you have a large plate that would already that already takes up your granite, you could put this on top of your plate, put the docking rail right on top of your plate. And then all of the inspection arsenal systems will still click right in. That way, if you already have a system, you don't have to get rid of your system. You can just utilize some components to help your system work faster. Yeah, we tell everybody it's, faster. the system is so lean that you don't even have to throw away your old stuff. Maybe. See, it's a quarter 20 volt pattern. Mm -hmm. all, the, all the competition's components will fit right onto our. Yep, so whatever you already have, any quarter 20 standard hardware, you can just run nuts and bolts and put just regular quarter 20 hardware right in there. Um, we do offer um, we do offer uh, metric plates available uh, as well. So if you if you would rather run a metric system, we do have metric available. Um, we do get uh, oftentimes we get people asking us to, for more holes. The the standard uh, bolt pattern is is a one inch uh, hole spacing, and we get a lot of people ask for half inch hole spacing and things. And we do we can comment on that. I do have some six by six plates with half inch hole spacing on them right now. Um, but something more important than that, which is really cool. This here, this is called a universal hole adjuster. And what this will do, and let me get it on a plate here for you and I'll show you. And what this will do is allow you to actually move, move this, this bolt hole right here around anywhere you want it to be. In between holes, anywhere. It gives you unlimited adjustability, unlimited um, availability for the whole plate. And a set of these is a lot cheaper than going with a custom plate. So keep that in mind. So if you decide, hey, well, one inch hole pattern is cool, but I want something with tighter hole patterns, tighter hole spacing than that. Instead of paying all that money to have a custom plate made, you just give yourself a set of universal adjusters, and uh, that, that will help us for anything you need. It'll give you even more universability than, uh, than going with a half inch hole. All right, well, I think that might be. The, most of the components that we want to talk about today. If you want to go to our website, inspectionarsenal.com, uh, it's loaded up with all kinds of information about all of our components. It talks about our bundled systems where we have plates and rails and work holding all in one package. There's videos uh, that I've made that are all over the place where you know, can learn about any of the components that we have to um, help to make the best selections for your system. And uh, now that you understand what um, what modular inspection is all about, I'll ask you again, would you spend $1,000 to save $100,000? I think that it's kind of a no-brainer. <laughs> no right? I mean, we're, uh, we're fixturing up the whole world and uh, it's, it's taking off really fast and pretty soon this is uh, going to be what uh, the majority of the, of the, the, the industry is going to be using and uh, if, you're not, if you're not adapting, you're not following on, you're going to be left behind and the future is definitely modular, so make sure that that doesn't happen. Yeah, feel free to reach out to us, inspectionarsenal.com. Um, lots of videos on YouTube. Yep. Um, yeah, lots of videos all over our website. And uh, if you have any questions, we're more than happy to help you out. We do, like I said, we do custom fixturing. Um, anything that you need to help streamline your production process, to help break, uh, break the bottlenecks in your inspection department, give us a shout and we'll be here for you. So, uh, Alan and uh, Eric, we, we do have a few questions that have come in from the audience. So, um, um, first one here, if fixtures can be swapped out on the machine, is there any reason why a fixture would not work on a different machine? I think we lost connection with you. So, say that question again. Sure, if, yeah, fixtures, sorry, if fixtures can be swapped out on the machine, is there any reason why a fixture would not work on a different machine? Oh, absolutely not. That we actually encourage that, and and, and a part of the ways where we talk about where this is such a cost-saving uh, system is that because you have the ability now to swap fixtures out on a machine, you can go unlimited fixtures on one machine, which is nice because now shops that may have a lot of different parts that they're doing, they may be ramping up on CMM machines. Whereas if you can swap in and out real quick, you could do the work on one machine that maybe you needed four machines to do before. But then vice versa, if you have multiple machines, if you have one machine that's tied up with something, 
an inspector or an operator could grab that fixture and they could, they could go and they could run that that program on that on another machine and they could put that in place on another machine as well. So I say unlimited fixtures on one machine or one fixture on unlimited machines. As long as all the other machines have a docking rail on it, it won't be right. right. It's it's right. Yep, exactly. Yep. Uh, another question. Actually, this one just came in. Do you have examples of using the fixtures to make go no go gauges? Um, off the top of my head, I don't have anything set up right now. But uh, if you want, leave your name and information, and I'll be sure to give you a shout back. And I'm sure we could uh, we could get with Steve and get with the guys in engineering. We could come up with something for you. Uh, next question: What is the repeatability of the lock and load plates? Sure. So the the plate to the rail has a uh, uh, has a true position of seven thousandths. So that's you know within within seven thousandths. And on a CMM machine. Um, it doesn't have to be right down to the thousand because the machine knows what's up. The machine understands where it's at. It's going to measure that part uh, regardless of where it's at. But um, but yeah, a true position of seven thousand is, is and that's that's quite accurate compared to most of the other systems that are out there. Uh, next question: How do I know what system I should get? <laughs> well, that there's a lot of variables to that, um, which is why we're here. It depends number one on the size of the grant, the size of your machine. Um, you know, and, and I don't recommend covering the whole brand with, with plates. That's that's and that goes against this. Again, I have, still to this day I have people call me up and say, "Hey, I got a customer that's looking for a an 80 inch, an 80 by 80 grid plate. You know, they want a four foot by or six or seven foot grid plate for no reason." And I tell them, I mean, "I've seen guys running the rail down both sides of the machine, and they're picturing plates on both sides of it and and, and, and lining it up." But the main, I guess, to answer the question, you need to know what's the size of the brand that you're using. The size of the uh, uh, work area that you that's on the granite, and then also what are the sizes of the parts that you're using? Um, yes, we do have um, pre-configured bundled systems, but that may not necessarily always be the best option for you because they're going to come with multiple size plates, small plates, and big plates. And if you're me mostly measuring big parts, you're probably going to want to go with bigger plates, and that's fine. Um, so go with the rails that you need. Go with the, and the various plate sizes are going to vary depending on the part sizes that you have. And if you're running mostly small parts, you can stick with mostly small uh, small plate sizes. So uh, it's really going to vary depending on, on the machine and the parts and the application. But that's what we're here for. Um, get the same information that you have, and be more than happy to set you up with something that's going to work with you perfectly. And also for a new user of inspection arsenal. I would always recommend having an advanced kit. So we have a basic, a complete, and an advanced kit of the components. The works. The works. Oh, yeah, the works. Um, generally, I like to say, if it's your first time buying a system, buy the works kit. So that you'll have all the components, you know what all the components are, and you'll get to know how they work. And then from there, you can buy the components separately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it is kind of, it is a, um, it, it is kind of a consumable product now. Because you now have the ability to build your fixture on one plate. So you say you were to build this fixture on a plate. Well, this now is, is your, your custom fixture, if you will. So you can now stick this in the job box, put your part number on the side of it, job number on the side of it, standardize this to really streamline that job. And, uh, and, and you can keep it in there with any of the other fixtures, just like on the shop floor. But now that if you're going to be using any of these fixtures, well, now you're going to need to purchase more of them to be able to build more on uh, more plates. But the nice thing is that. Even if that part potentially goes obsolete, these these components are just standard components. You could then rip all these down and reuse them again. So it is a custom fixture, but it would never go obsolete. It would never be obsolete because the you know the, the, all the, the components of it are standard. And one thing I'd like to point out too is you know you go to any factory, there'll be rows and rows of, of shelving or a list of cabinets of chuck jaws or vice jaws. You know you'll have a, a, a soft set of jaws to, uh, to fit. A pallet truck, you know, you have know, the profile of the, the outer diameter um, on, your, on your truck jaws or your waist jaws. Same thing, you can take a fixture when you're done measuring the part, put the fixture on your shelf. If that job repeats, pull it off the shelf and your fixtures are to me. Yeah, that's cost savings, that's time savings right there. On the brand new yep. So basically, for every 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 bottleneck, every, all the downtime, all the payroll, everything. If you're, you know, any of that all added together is, is thousands of dollars a week that are really being lost by uh, by companies that are not embracing with, with a faster modular uh, production process. A couple more questions. Uh, so you do 
so you do custom fixture design. How do I go about having a project done? Sure, just hit us up. If you go to our website, um, there's actually uh, on the top bar, there's a, a button you can click and fill out the uh, fixture design request form. It's just going to just ask some various parts of the different types of equipment that you're using and, and what kind of inspection you're trying to accomplish. Um, any step files that you might have that you are willing to share, we'd be more than happy to sign any NDAs that you need to, uh, that, that, that you would require. Um, get us that information. Uh, I'll send it into uh, to our engineering staff, and they can come up with a concept. They'll probably contact you and ask a few more questions to get some more details. And uh, there'll be a series of sign-offs along the way, but uh, they, they'll come up with a concept and let you know. And as soon as you say, that sounds great, and you get rolling. And we do have a quick turnaround. We are a, a, a small enough shop to really be able to get stuff done quickly. And because we understand the pains of the industry, we, we do our best to... Uh, to accommodate everybody as, as fast and as efficiently as we can. And I know we see a lot of competition out there that are saying, you know, 12, 20 weeks for jobs to be done. It's really not uncommon for us to get a request for a job, the concept of the job, the sign up on it, and get it completely manufactured and out the door. And, you know, sometimes as little as six weeks or less. Um, but the nice thing is we can do it and we can scope, do a scope of work um, where we do a full job where we design it and manufacture everything here for you and send it out the door. Or we can do just a, uh, I don't know what you necessarily call it, but we can, we can cut off the manufacturing part of that and we can do the whole design and everything and get the CAD models and everything, provide that to you. And if you, it makes more sense in, in to, uh, to have the components manufactured either in-house at your shop or somewhere closer to you, more locally to you, you can go ahead and take those models and take those drawings and have that done elsewhere, whatever works best for you. So we're definitely willing to work with you and work with everybody on whatever types of, uh, whatever their custom situation may be. Last question, gentlemen, uh, real simple. What if I already have fixturing? <laughs> I think no, they hurt. No, 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 no. So if you already have existing fixturing, which usually somebody does, um, we have a tail that you can just purchase separately and you can uh, drill on top of a hole on the side of your plate, um, attached to the side of your plate. Um, buy a, a docking rail, you know, the, the 12, 18, a third inch docking rail, whichever one fits your machine. Mount this to your plate, uh, mount this to your cable with uh, with the mounting bolts or with double sided uh, epoxy tape if you want to have it on the outside of your work envelope. And it'll, it'll click right in. Or you can also mount these rails directly on top of an existing plate. And then from there, all uh, inspection arsenal equipment will click right in on top of your existing plate. And all the components from the existing plate, usually the most popular thread size is quarter 20. So chances are the end user has a quarter 20 grid pattern plate. So all of the components will fit on inspection arsenal. Absolutely. Yep, a more universal, streamlined, lean system out there. <laughs> All right, I guess we leave it at that. So that concludes today's webinar. I want to thank our speakers, Alan Delisle and Eric Meehan, and I want to thank Phillips Precision for making this webinar possible. Learn more at inspectionarsenal.com. An email with a link to a recording of this webinar should come to you within the next few days. Thank you for your time today. I'm Pete Zielinski with Modern Machine Shop Magazine. Thank you very much. Have a good night.